So the creature design, uh, the creepy creature design challenge is due by the end of October, but it's not going to be due on the 31st. It's a Monday. It's going to be due on the 27th, which is the last day we have together before Halloween. And what you're supposed to do is design a creepy creature using references that you... There's, there's no resource pack for this one because this one's a pretty quick challenge. Uh, but um, typically what you're just supposed to be doing is uh, following these references. You don't have to follow these references, but they work as some really, really good silhouettes. So some people were saying, this is not really creepy, it's just a chinchilla. Uh, but it's, it has a good silhouette to add on to, so you can add on to a lot of it. Um, I, I like to give you guys references that have really good silhouettes. That's pretty much what I look for. If I'm always giving you something with ears and a tail, it's not really going to be interesting. So these are awesome silhouettes. If you want to use this silhouette as well, it's, <laughs> it's up to you. Just please add something like wings or something. Don't leave it just like that. Um, but uh, but yeah, use these silhouettes and other um, topics. I mean I mean other references that you have from different like types of uh, animals. But you are not supposed to use a humanoid. If you draw a humanoid, I'm not looking at your work on the on, on the 27th. So you can use references I added on as well as some of your own. Someone was talking about how the Witcher creature designs inspire them, so you can do that. That's great. Uh, but uh, humanoids are not allowed. Please stick to practical but creepy creatures. Um, so it's not just about drawing any random animal. It's not about the creature design challenge when we, the one that we did earlier this year between a sand habitat or a sky habitat. Um, these are specifically creepy creatures um, that you have to draw. Uh, so fo please follow the same sketching and submission format as the last two challenges. If you wanted to sketch them only, sketch them clean, clean sketches. If you wanted to render them, render them. But do not do an in-between. It's either you go sketch or you go full render. All right? You want to do grayscale pro progress shots between now and the 27th, please go ahead and do that. Uh, but it is, I'm not inviting you guys to give me a half-painted um, creature design. Either you go full render, you do the sketches, you do some grayscale and you go full render and you hand in the full render, meaning you can go full color, just have fun, go crazy. Or you want to try different creatures. It doesn't have to be one creature, you can do multiple creatures. I mean, I didn't write that here, but it's a pretty lenient um, uh, challenge for this one. I just wanted to keep it fun, less homework, homeworky. y um, But if you wanted to just draw multiple sketches and upload them, uh, then you can do that as well, but you have to keep them clean in the same format that we saw uh, for the uh, for these challenges here. Uh, so for the for the uh, for the uh, fellowship challenge, which was a really really fun. I had so much fun looking through all your stuff. You guys inspired the crap out of me. Like I've been in a little bit of a rut, but you guys are just so amazing. You guys come in with some amazing variety, amazing backgrounds, and and uh, inspiration. Everyone's different. Everyone has, set, has a different combination of art that's inspired them and, and formed them to who they are, into who they are. It's, it's really fun seeing the variety and diversity you guys bring in, design-wise and inspiration-wise. So this is just one of those fun, really, really fun challenges I want you guys to try. And um, it's nice. It's in the theme of of this of this season, and it's probably going to get. Uh, it's really, really similar challenges for the rest of the season, uh, for the rest of the holiday seasons. <clears throat> But this is just one way to keep it fun and keep it lively. So to submit them, you just have to go here. Make sure you submit into theme submissions. If do not, absolutely do not submit, submit, submit. Do not submit single sketches. Do not submit single sketches. So Sarah, Chris, you did that here. And I, I like you. I, I, I really just want to be, you know, friends. <laughs> but I'm really, really mad at you doing this. <laughs> okay. It doesn't sound like I'm mad, but I'm tired. I'm fuming. I'm just, I'm really, really pissed off. All right. But I don't allow this because if one person does it, another guy comes in with a half ass sketch within 15 seconds and posts it on the wall every single day as a little journal. And then eventually this turns into a, a different kind of community. All right. So please don't do this again. Um, probably uh, submit it with other sketches, progress thoughts. I just want to see bulk sketches submitted just so we can keep that rule consistent and followed. That rule is it has a very, very good meaning behind it. It's a very good purpose behind it. So the, the community doesn't, um, we don't have daily posts from people or, or daily sketch posts and stuff that we can't really critique. It's hard to critique a single sketch you did in 15 seconds. It's better to post them together so that we can look at over your overall improvement and what you need to work on. 
All right, so these are some really amazing sketches that people have already started. I submitted the, uh, the, the challenge brief yesterday, and I'm already getting these amazing designs. Courtney, I think, is my favorite. <laughs> I love how in the next frame you just saw how it ate someone's... <laughs> this is really, really funny. I'm really, really creative, too. This is really great. Um, this one I've seen a couple times. This design is always something that we go for. Uh, it's it's um it's something that I've seen a lot. So you might want to give this one a little bit more variety, a little bit more intrigue. The silhouette seems pretty boring. The reason why the silhouettes are so amazing is because they read even if you just got rid of all the detail. The silhouette itself brings it, it brings in its own detail. And this one is just Frank. It's just <laughs> it just looks great. I think he did amazing. Um, one thing I recommend though is that if you're gonna go gruesome on one section, try to get rid of the the, the rest. So go gruesome on one feature. It'll be even more scary if it looks like that. Because if you're giving me a scary eye, scary mouth, and scary nose, really you're just giving me too much information. It's going to feel cheesy and overdone. But this, he's like, you know, he's got crazy sense of smell. He's got these super crazy teeth. Why does he need eyes? You know, if he lives in the dark, um, dry areas, I feel like his eyesight would be very, really, really underdeveloped. And this looks even more scary. So always think about that. Don't give us too much. If you give us too much of a human face, you got to go full human and animal body. And then that's already done so many times. We've seen it in Avatar. We've seen it in, I forget which, what was that other place? They've seen it like this thing, like the Sphinx face. Um, but uh, if you're going to go for creature design, again, please avoid anything human-esque and uh, humanoidy. So that face, that whole eye, super developed eye, human teeth, try to avoid it. That's why Alien was so fucking scary, because his eyes were non-existent, and that's why it was such a successful creature design, because um, uh, the eyes weren't there, but they've got this this teeth thing, so all the gruesomeness and fear factor is here, and God knows where their eyes are, it's probably right there, and it's not so insignificant to detail. So just remember that, either give us a scary nose and you leave out the mouth, or you give us a freaky mouth and a nose and you leave out the eyes, or you give us full eyes and leave out the rest of the face. Um, but just don't try, to, don't, don't try to feed too much. The fear factor is in the familiarity of the animal face, but also the alien uh, characteristic of the animal face, the way you've designed its anatomy, how you've left out areas that without it, it wouldn't be able to function, but it still does. So it's a, an abomination, a monster. Just think abomination. Think a way to, to, to mutate and uh, manipulate its anatomy so that it's half familiar, half completely fucked up. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm not very formal with my with my terminology today. <clears throat> All right. This one is also really great, but just remember the exact same thing. This one looks like a cute little silly animal versus a creepy creature. I want to be creeped out. Like I got creeped out by that Courtney one that you did. Um so I want to the other guy did. So I want to be creeped out. So remember just try to creep people out. And you do that by thinking uncanny, by breaking values, by um uh, breaking anatomy. And uh, interrupt like a, like interrupting the function of the anatomy, so bringing in some weird new extra nose that it has that it doesn't even use, or something like that, or two mouths, one inside the other, which they did in Alien. <clears throat> but anyway, so have fun on your challenge, um, and uh, yeah, just think about all of that stuff. All right, let's go to this one. I saw this one posted. It looks amazing. You really know how to complete a, a painting, but uh, there's a couple of an, an anatomy issues here. This could be because um, there might be some influence of photography or photo bashing here. And when we do that, we tend to, uh, you know, we submit, like we surrender ourselves to the limits of the photograph we're using. So it's hard to manipulate. You have to know what looks right and what looks wrong or else the photograph will trick you into thinking that what you're drawing looks right. So this looks wrong uh, for a lot of reasons. So when we, um, let's see. If I can find some references that that uh, that show this, um, so serving sushi. <coughs> um, sushi chef. I just want a chef with both hands are on the. All right. So this guy here. Oh, this is really good. Happy fella. So this guy here, his arm is moving outward just like this guy is. All right, but his his shoulder is really low. So let's say that this guy, okay, this guy's old, this guy's younger than him. Not young, but younger than him. 
And he is haunched as his back is haunched, and this guy's isn't. This guy's back is somewhat somewhat haunched. Um, we can all we can do really is lower the head down. That's all we would need to do. The haunching of the spine has nothing to do with the compression of the shoulders. What this guy is doing is deliberately shrugging. It's like I don't know. Um, and this means that we're using the trapezius muscles over here and tensing them and uh, uh, flexing them so that they pull the shoulders up or that we are actually moving just, just the joints, we're moving them up. So when our hands um, reach for the sky, reference. all right, so when our hands arms reach for the sky, um, our shoulders tend to get really locked in and, and then this muscle gets tensed and then our shoulder comes a lot closer to the neck and then this this entire uh, neckline completely disappears. We don't see the silhouette of the neck anymore, we just see the line of the shoulder and then the head and just a little bit of the trapezius muscles on the side. You see that there is no more neck, but this is only if we're looking from a camera down and even then the shoulder line ends right about here. So you st you're missing width, you're missing a lowering of the shoulder, so the shoulders need to be a little bit lower and you're missing a reference entirely. And maybe you did use a photograph, so if someone's telling you, hey, you have proportion issues here, and then in your mind you're like, yeah, fucker, I'm using a photograph, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, because I just used a photograph and you're telling me there's proportion issues. Even if you use a photograph, you're still, you know, unlearned in, 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 in the, you know, in what, what looks right and the function and making sure the anatomy is intact. And this object can really move, so even then you don't know. Since you have to depend on the photograph to render for you, you don't have a background in the anatomy. That's if you use a photograph, I really can't tell. Um, so you, you wouldn't know if you use a photograph whether or not the photograph was bashed correctly with the other uh, reference that you brought in. So those are all the corrections I'm going to make here. So the back should be haunched, but or the neck can stay just like this, but the shoulders are much too close. And I'll erase and bring back the old um, the old state of the previous layer, so don't worry about it getting the face getting uh, contorted or whatever or warped. <clears throat> All right, so I'm bringing these down, and just like this guy is doing here, his elbow is out. So if you're holding a staff and you really don't want to go for that, um, like a medieval kind of anatomy when someone's holding a staff in those holy. Uh, like uh, like those uh, stained glass drawings where the anatomy looks so stiff and unrealistic because typically sciences weren't just they hadn't developed the art world yet so all the anatomy looked really really weird back then so this is kind of what it looks like and maybe you're going for that because that's something that you've borrowed from that time however um, mistakenly developed it was but even then, the elbow would just it would, it would look much more fluid and much more believable if we followed the realistic gesture versus the symbolic gesture from uh, you know whatever you might ha might have inspired you. So what I'm doing is trying to bring this shoulder down so that it feels a little bit more relaxed. He still feels like he's haunched, really, really haunching. So don't mind the face. I'll get the old face back, but I'm just trying to make a believable. <clears throat> gesture here. Alright, so let me see if I can get the old face back. Okay, so that feels a little bit more natural, but even then, I feel like it should move down as well as... Maybe I should move the head up the old piece now. I'll move it down and then erase the way. Since you have access to layers, you'll be able to do this a lot better than I can. So he is haunched. He's still haunched, but he doesn't feel like he's tends to shoulders in this way that doesn't feel natural. So I gave his body some width. Even if he's a scrawny fellow, he's wearing some kind of armor. It's gonna. He is scrawny under all that armor still. But it isn't... Uh, showing through because of the uh, the armor and the silhouette you've got going on. So he doesn't feel like you're your run-of-the-mill alchemist. This guy feels like, like heavy-duty bad guys, counselor kind of 
fella or someone who gives you a really super quest or in relation to the antagonist or the protagonist. This guy feels like, you know, a big shot. Okay. So we fixed that, but it still feels a little bit wrong because this gesture right here, he's kind of resting his arm on the table. So I don't know if he's summoning something, but he's too tired to kind of just lift his arm upward. I think the gesture would look a lot more powerful if you had his arm move up higher. So if his arm was just outward and it was so out it was leaving the shadow of the of the space behind it. I think that would look a lot more successful for the gesture. So I'm just erasing this. Just trying to get that to work. Okay. And then of course we need a bend in the elbow, so anything to indicate that the fabric here has bent around the elbow. And then this light that's shooting in from the side, so before, after, so it feels a little bit more relaxed. But yeah, this light that's shooting in from the side, you have two options. Either exaggerate this light source and run it across, which is really, really a great way to divide a canvas or to exaggerate the shadow behind him. So I think it's a combination of both. I think we need to do a little bit of both. Oops. Kind of doubled up the stuff over here. Okay. So I'm grabbing Darken. Sorry, I'm a little slow today because um this finger is just completely just chopped. It's like it's like the finger I need to use to draw. Man, I I should have like an aide walk with me wherever I go to make sure I don't injure myself anymore. All right, so I'm darkening this a little extra, running some shadows across. <clears throat> this arm that's stretching out is gonna cast some shadows across the rest of the body. So you have a because this shadow here is being cast, so why not across here? We have a great opportunity here to show off some form. It should probably be as level like that. Okay. So, another way to make him look scrawny is to make the armor around him feel really, really big. And the way to do that is to shrink his head or enlarge his uh, the whole image around him. So duplicate the layer. Oops. Ouch. And, um, sorry, this is going to be like really, really crazy. <laughs> Give me a sec. I have to make the uh, thing partly invisible. So I'm increasing the size of everything around him. This is going to make him look more scrawny and more old. So he's not going to look as bulky. So the body uh, body armor around him is really, really like oversized. Okay. <clears throat> so another thing really would be uh, just um, tucking this elbow in and giving it some mass. Because it was just a little bit weak. But I think... Um, like this kind of gesture wouldn't the camera wouldn't catch the hand in this gesture the camera would catch the front of the knuckles we'd be able to see the knuckles so I think what you're missing is like a a good reference for someone holding a staff while looking at the camera so it would be more something like this and then the staff is right here and then we have his knuckles his fingers and then his thumb right so then we would see the the, the the elbow right here instead of over here. So what you did is a very basic gesture instead of overlapping the arm on itself. So this is upper arm, this is forearm, and then this is the hand holding the staff. So this could be the reference you bought, you, uh, that you found 
<clears throat> you could have just been limited to the reference you had. But I think all of this stuff combined is really making the, the body... He is. He does look tensed. He does look like an old man. It just hurts to wake up, you know? But he no longer looks like he's doing a deliberate gesture where he's pulling his shoulders in together beside his ears. The way you do when you hear something. Like loud or something before. I don't know what I, the hell I just did. Before, after. Okay. Before, after. So this whole area felt a little bit light, especially because the light is only coming from one side. You can give these little objects here a little bit more illumination if you want to. If some of them are shinier than others. But generally keep the, the, the local shadow here darker. It was just a little bit too light. Felt like there was another light up there, maybe another window, and there was no indication of a ray of light coming in. And if there was, it has to be parallel with this one, because you see this line, that has to be parallel, because the sun is a vanishing point for all the rays of light. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, fix that chair. <clears throat> so any questions at all regarding this? Can anyone summarize in a quick sentence or two what I just did to correct this? what the main issue was. And because the light is all coming from the side, I feel like there would be some really large shadows running across his face. Really, really strong shadows. Okay. Darken. <coughs> Oh, motherfucker, did I really just lose my... Oh my god. Who's deselecting? Who's deselecting, Lasso? Who? Oh, me. Who? Who's deselecting, man? I'm asking you to show me. I am asking you to show me the, the lasso. I am asking you to see the lasso. Like, show me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Like, I'm not even... I'm not even deselecting this fucking thing. Move selection. Like, I'm not. I want to see the lasso that I added in. Is that so hard? Oh, now you... Okay, now you show me. Thank you. Thank you, Photoshop. <clears throat> okay, so darken. We're just throwing these values here. It's okay if it's full, fully pitch black. It's okay. Because we want that. We want that read. And then we can just decrease opacity. Just like that. And then blur away. Now I can deselect. Okay, it already did. <clears throat> so there would definitely be some shadows here. Because this light is coming in from the side, why, were, why wouldn't there be shadows? And because the light is coming in from the side and not top down, the side of the nose would actually be illuminated. And this part here would be a mid-tone. So now what you're doing is reinforcing the fact that the light source is coming in from an angle. Also, his proportions are extremely feminine. He looks like a very, very old um, woman instead of a you know a seasoned. All right, so this is a cast shadow. Right, all right. Ow, my finger! <laughs> Stupid lasso. Okay, so just like that. <clears throat> What we're doing is just adding the light here. So the way to make him look like an older gentleman instead of a an older female is to shrink his eyes completely. And when we got rid of the, when we started bringing in shadows, his proportions really started to show through. So uh, wait for it. Did I lasso that? Yeah, I didn't do it in really later. That's fine. I'm just gonna blend away. 
the side of that cheek got some bite, not all of it. And I'm going to go into lasso again and shrink his eyes. To make a character look, let's see if anyone can summarize what I did today. The shoulders were too narrow and high, and the gesture of the arm was too stiff. Raising it helped complete the gesture. Good job, Bridget. Um, <clears throat> I hope whoever did this goes back and makes corrections, because this is such a good painting. It really is. It is. Um, <clears throat> who knew taking notes would turn out to be an incentive to make me show up on time to class? He looks like um, this old man in my neighborhood. <laughs> Remember to be a chicken thief. <laughs> Alyssa. <laughs> You're just hilarious today. Um, the raised arm especially makes it so, so powerful. It draws you in. Yes, it does, yes. Gesture feels more fluid. Uh, 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 so who said I'm bashing? I love how she bashes the art she is criticizing in her videos, but I learn a lot from because she's not sugarcoating. I'm not bashing anything. I'm bash bashing would be like, yo, man, what the hell is these colors suck, yo? Like, seriously, fix the colors. Fix the colors, pleb. I don't know. I don't even know how to bash. <laughs> I mean, I know how to bash when I play League. I talk a lot of shit. But that's very, that's very, that's neither here nor there. This is not bashing, all right? Smart ass. <clears throat> so what I'm doing now is I'm going to shrink the eyes. Typically what you want to avoid if you're a female, like if you want to draw a female, um, is uh, you want to keep the eyes large. If you want to draw a female, keep the eyes large, nose small, and the lips inside. See this line I'm drawing right here between the pupil straight down? This is where you want to keep the, the lips right here in this golden ratio. But if you want to draw someone that looks old, you want to do the exact opposite of that. You want to shrink their eyes. When you shrink the eyes, you remove the beauty. Period. That's what it is. A shrunken eye is like a not really a beautiful eye. And when you get old, a lot of stuff sags around your eyes. Even if you had large eyes when you were a kid, a lot of stuff sags down towards your eyes. And people are saying I don't sugarcoat. Who is sugarcoating, though? Like, in comparison to me, making me look like I'm bashing. I'm talking very neutral. Like, I'm pretty neutral. I'm lowering the outer corners of the eyes down. <clears throat> because that sag also sags. If I do this, it'll look pretty again. You don't want to, you don't want anything that looks like a cat eye. But yeah, anyway, who's out there sugarcoating stuff? Like, seriously, whoever, whoever they are needs to stop. Whoever is sugarcoating needs to stop immediately. Okay, so it's a little too small, because you got to zoom out and test it. Whoa. Looking liquefy. I'm going to raise the nose up and increase the distance between the nose and the mouth. That's another age signature. Now he looks even more dignified. And you'll see how cute he looked before. He, he looked positively Maybelline before. And I'm going to sag the mouth, give it some width, sag it, and then just give it some of that here. I'm going to give him some of that, like, concentrated smolder. You know what I mean? And, it, you know, it really wouldn't hurt you to just have one eye smaller than the other. You know? Old people are funny like that. <laughs> Maybe give him a scowl, too. Like, old people sometimes just look pissed all the time. So one eye seems to be... All right, so just take a look at this handsome fella now. I'm going to add in some more minor shadows. So this extra puff here. Cause an extra little shadow under it in the eye. This sag over here. The eye still looks a little bit large, eh? Like it still looks really, really big. But it's okay. It's because mostly you have this eyeliner thing going on. Don't be afraid to make the eyelids like completely, like the lash line, whiter than usual or lighter than usual. If you add too much makeup, it will look like an old lady with makeup on. Okay. I'm going to add in a couple of brow creases. <clears throat> I think a lot uh, also avoid pointing out your flaws and instead of just go keep drawing and you'll get better. Even though that might not entirely be the case depending on how you're practicing. Yeah, I agree with that, Looney. Um, who would just be like, you know, he looks like my grandpa, he scowls and drools. 
um, my old art teacher was afraid of critiquing bash them plebs <laughs> Uh, a lot of art teachers tend to steer clear a lot from critique. Nah, fuck them. Just leave them in the dust. Tell them, you know what? You're useless. Really. <laughs> and if I ever start sugarcoating or whatever, tell me to get lost too. And I will officially stop making videos the day I start sugarcoating. Because what's the point? We're neither negative or positive. We're very, very neutral. These are these sciences, like these rules, these sciences exist long before I was born. So it's, it's not my personal opinion, so there's no way I could have bashed you. I didn't approach it personally enough. Like, if you insulted me, then I'd, <laughs> then I'd really know how to hurt you <laughs> when it comes to your art. Like, if I wanted to insult you, I'd know exactly where to go. But none of this is personal. Like, I don't know this person right now. This person who I'm critiquing, I don't know. So it's never bashing. It looks like bashing because everyone's been coddling you since you were born art is just like this you're you're a pretty little butterfly but mom i want to be a really really good amazing art, sketch artist and illustrator for wizards of the coast or blizzard no no you're a pretty butterfly they'll hire you no matter what that's not that's not going to get you into blizzard <clears throat> okay all right so let's take a look at where his eyes were before let's take a look at a general the general a whole before and after before do you see how pretty he looked didn't I tell you positively Maybelline? Looked like a pretty girl with uh with uh with laugh lines and jowls and alright. Really big, big eyes. Big eyes. When you get old, a lot of stuff sags. A lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm talking everything. Gravity is a cruel force. Alright. So, um before after any questions there really wouldn't be any light on like the, the rim light back here because the chair is in the way also the chair would kind of just cause a lot of shadows so there must have been another window on the side there and it must have flooded his back so that must have been the reason why you get a rim light but like if there was this window was in the back side of the wall and there was another one and then there was another one Yeah, I just burped. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I've just been really burpy. I'm sorry. When you have tea, it's just, you know, all the steam. <laughs> Olderly people. <laughs> when you get old, you get fucked up. Oh, this is just the first one that I've critiqued. <clears throat> We're still on this. It's too much to cover. Uh, yeah, he was he was so beautiful before. He was just gorgeous, and the and the rested hand didn't really do much for the illustration. So when we kind of give him that old man look, he kind of just starts to come together. And if you want to make him look like someone who's, you know, addicted to opiates, but also really really into chewing tobacco, but also like the leading authority in black magic, just give him some dark lips. Trust me, it looks weird. Give him some dark circles around his eyes. I mean, all of this stuff will help make him look like a creep. If you're going for a creep. If you're not going for a creep, but someone who's just old and weathered, just give him the dark circles. I mean, there's so many other things you can do other than, um, uh, well, there's so many things you can add instead of just the, 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 the laugh lines and the saggy face, along with shrinking the eyes and the nose and the to make him look like a creep if you're going for the creep thing. So before, after, and you see how this area was a little bit too light. Like I said, you can, if there's tiny little artifacts here in the back that are catching the light, illuminate them. <clears throat> I also really, really hope you have this in layers because it'll be a bitch cleaning around all these layers. Okay. <clears throat> all right. I'm still amazed by the amount of drama the raising of the hand added. Yeah. Well, it takes effort to raise the hand. It works as part of that, that uh, spiral, but in a very strange new spot. And this line here, and this spiral kind of just, I mean, it's not really the spiral, but it is, I think it's a, similar to it, divided. It's got this holy symmetry going on, which is okay, because he's like seems like a holy person, or an, a holy, unholy person. All right. 
is the arm kind of wrong? Well, this arm still feels wrong. I did mention that it's supposed to be overlapped. The staff should pr pretty much overlap him. It feels very, very off. We don't have enough of a bend in this one. I added some work here, but it still doesn't feel like a bend enough. Maybe this arm should be, this hand should be a little larger. It still feels stiff overall because the starting point was so very, very stiff. Maybe this elbow could reach out just a little bit, so if we tuck this elbow out, maybe that'll do the trick. But it would be very difficult to pull that off. Just make it feel like there's the elbow sticking out there. Uh, it didn't do much at all. Okay, so I hope this helped you. Let me know if you guys um, have any other questions regarding this um, in, the, in, in the post on, uh, on the community. If you want your, your copy sent back to you, just message me on Facebook. I'll be able to send, send it back to you there. So let's get Portrait Studio open. Let's do this right here. Let's shrink the nose like all the way. By the way, I know I've been promising an update for Portrait Studio. I promise you it's in the works. Um, our main delay now was that our main project became corrupted somehow. Um, so the scene was corrupted, and we have to start from scratch. So the whole model thing, that's all finished. The new models, full body models, completely new models for male and female, <clears throat> are, all, are all finished and ready to be placed, but the UI just completely inter uh, corrupted, and the project had to be uh, started from scratch again. So nose size. Let's shrink the nose all the way. All right, we're shrinking the nose, like, probably over here. And it looks like this front view, all right? So this is how it looks like for a normal normal view camera, no, normal level, but the nose is super small. This is a larger nose, okay? <laughs> this is average, normal size, and this is like really, really small. So tilting the camera, let's take a look at that ribbon drawing. All right, so what you had here was you had, if, if this girl's nose right here was exactly the same proportion as it is here right now. If we tilted her face back, her nose would look like that. And that's not proportionate. It should be somewhere like over here. Or even back to where it was originally. Um, actually, somewhere, somewhere here. Let's just reset the sliders. Whoa, reset the sliders. So somewhere here, <laughs> excuse me. Alright, so nose size. Shrink it just a little bit, just because we're working from an anime influence. Let's kind of tilt the light to be exactly from the direction you had it in. And then tilt it like that. All right. So the nose that you drew wouldn't be the size for her eye, sh eye size and her mouth size. It would actually be somewhere here, but you drew it somewhere along this side. So the nose size is going to be changed. And then you create some shadows moving in from the lower right. So what I'm going to change is I'm going to increase the nose size, which is going to change the shadow. And also, the shadow that you drew seems to be um, coming in from a little uh, an off angle. It usually just sources right from the very, very top line of the nose bridge. But for yours, th there was no nose bridge. It was like the nose bridge completely disappeared. So let's make the nose bridge disappear. And it would do exactly the same thing. But do you want to see what this looks like from normal normal view from the side? It looks like that. What? You guys want to see that again? So this is normal nose bridge with the shadow sourcing from the bridge of the nose. So a straight line like that. But for us to have it source from this side and go up along this angle that you have here, the nose bridge would have to be completely gone. Nose bridge depth. All right. And that would mean it looks like this from the side. All right. So these are all the things that I'm going to be changing. <clears throat> so this should start from here. And this whole business, this this whole system, should be much bigger. And that's going to make it look right. The no, the nose was just too small. And this happens, you know, when you test a student's rotation, their ability to rotate the camera, 
and then rotate the object, it's, 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 it's a very difficult thing to do. And that's why rotation is one of the, one of the things I cover in my tutoring. It's a, one massive part of the curriculum. If a student is incapable of rotating a basic cube in their mind, they're not going to be able to rotate a nose in their mind and, and draw and from different perspectives and still apply the right correctly. That's why having references is really, really important. <clears throat> so I increase the size of the nose and fix the angle. So now it looks a little less pinched and a little less off-center. I'm going to just tuck that back up and the... Uh, We've started the shadow from the nose bridge. Why? Because the nose is an actual, it's a pyramid. If you look at its most basic geometry, that's how you get better at shading anything. That's how you learn to shade anything. You look at the basic geometry of it. So this is the pyramid of this object. And if I was, you know, if I had a pyramid and I had a, and it was connected to a bunch of other stuff, the shadow would start from the top of the pyramid. This is where the light would start, it would, it would be interrupted. This is the highest point it reaches. And then this line is the line of the top of the pyramid. Okay? So you think about the basic geometry. You don't need as much referencing as you think you do, which is why I always recommend students, and my students as well, to rotate these shapes and then try to add, try to use the exact same lighting but rotate. This is an assignment that I do constantly, and I recommend this to you for you guys as well. So doing basic, learning the sh learning shading in an environment on basic forms and different lighting and rotating them will keep you prepared for this kind of issue in the future. Okay, so one thing that you did a little bit wrong is that you added a wrinkle. So if you're trying to make her, and, and the light is coming from the bottom and moving up, what's going to happen is that we should just get rid of that line. That line isn't even a laugh line. So just make it, instead of a line, replace a line with an edge. Replace your lines with edges. Write that back to me. You don't need a line. You just needed the edge where they didn't blend together because the light was coming from the bottom. And it couldn't reach the upper lip. It just reached the cheek because the cheek is more elevated. All right, same thing over here. You want to add detail, but I know somehow, somewhere you're going to do this. And this is wrong because now it's going to look like a... A wrinkle or something painted on. What you do is to keep her young but to bring in edges, you just replace areas that were potential lines, replace them and make an edge. An edge is just very simple. It's a beautiful, simple, divine thing. It's just not blending one shade with the other beside it. Just making a nice separation. And that brings in all of that beautiful um, form. Now these are some really, really basic form critiques. This isn't an, an extensive paint over. This isn't me changing everything. The question you had was, if the hair was white and, she, and they're in shadow, how do I make the hair look white and not purple? Just don't bring the purple in. That's it. White hair is white hair. So just because it's in a purple shadow doesn't mean that you have to bring in a pure purple. To make hair that is white look like it's in a, white, uh, it's in a darker environment, you just get rid of all colors. If you had to make it purple, just a little bit, you can add in just a little bit of the purple back in. Now her hair looks white. So just because you have the rule that objects in the shadow realm are, shadow realm, jeez, objects in the shadow section are, um, are more cool, it doesn't mean you have to bring in the purple. Like I said, you don't just go in there and bring in purple if you're trying to bring in a, a, a shadow shade for the skin tones. What you do is you go into the reds. The skin tones are white, yellow, and the shadows are red. Look what happened to the slider. It went down into the red. That's how you bring in the purple. You don't actually go to purple. So what's the what's the cool what's something what's cooler than gray? Nothing. And if it's white and the environment is dark enough, the hair is white, it's a gray tone, it's a it has no color in it to bring out any purple. Um, it's just you can just leave it as a grayscale. You don't have to bring in a full purple. Now her hair is purple. So you don't assume that it's a set in stone rule to make all shadows have a pure purple hue on them. It's not about the hue. It's about how cool it looks compared to objects in the sh in, in, in the light, objects objects that have light shining on them. How cool they look in comparison to all all other values that are not in shadow.
Don't actually go to purple. Thank you, Alyssa. Find ways to make it look cool before you depend on the purple. The purple is a stylistic thing if you really wanted to push that shadow thing without disrupting the actual hue. So right now what you did was you brought purple in, but you ruined the, you know, the concept. The concept is supposed to be that her hair is white and that she is completely broken and that she needs a nerve. <laughs> All right? But, um, but, yeah, that's beside the point. No, that is the point. Get on it, Riot. <clears throat> Putting this out there. <laughs> and my millions and millions of viewers, <laughs> we're all going to strike. You know, I still firmly believe that if we all went on strike, Riot would start listening to us. <laughs> so the white hair doesn't reflect the purple. There is no purple, Alyssa. There is no purple. <laughs> there is no purple. There, there, this isn't a purple wash room. The light source isn't purple. There is no purple in shadows. It looks purple compared to things that are in the light source. The absence of yellow automatically makes it feel like there's purple, but there isn't an actual purple happening. The cameras read purple because that's just, that's what's happening in the environment, but we use purple because we use it, not because we're actually bringing in an individual purple, that's just going to be too purple. We're bringing in a color that looks purple compared, okay, let me show you. All right, let's say we have this orange, really, really basic orange color. I'm going to move slightly towards the yellows. Look how green that looks. Doesn't that look green? We haven't even touched yellows yet, but it looks green compared to the orange because there's just so much red in it, and red and green are opposites. So this is because the absence of red will inspire the complementary color out. But as artists, we have to bring in the green sometimes, but sometimes we don't have to bring in the green at all. We just let the colors do the job. We let the physics happen. We let the physics do it. And now if I move into yellow, this is just fucking, it's green. This is just green. It looks green, but it's not even it's not even yellow yet. And in order for it to really read as yellow, we have to go all the way up in the values. Yellow doesn't sit in the dark tone, so anything that is dark yellow will actually look green. And then there's actual green. Did you guys see that? <laughs> yeah, you were just so dead set on the purple. <laughs> You're like, damn it, I want to make them proud. And I'm just going to use some purple. One last thing I would do is, even though, so listen to this, everybody. Even though we darken values and make them purpley and reddish in, in, in the areas of darkness, all right, we still can't saturate. What does the dark mean? It means the absence of light. Take a look at what just happened. Take a look at this miracle. Right? Doesn't that look purple to you? Doesn't this just suddenly look purple? Can anyone see it? All I did was desaturate. So shadows, in their desaturated red state, take on this purple effect. A dark red has a little bit of purple in it. Because of that blue that's in the formula between red and uh, between purple like in purple that makes purple it's red and blue so you had a much too saturated redness happening so I can bring some of it back actually I think I overdid it because I zoomed in I just desaturated I didn't bring in purple at all but look it looks purple and we're just over here we're not even in purples yet so red in and of itself can bring all the purple that you need okay so if I just bring in some of that saturation back in these side, but your shadows were really oversaturated, buddy. You had too much going on. <clears throat> also, the um, the angry face looks just a little bit too uh, too much of it, like a it looks a little bit off, and this part of the face looks like it sagged down. So she is beautiful. She is a Maybelline face. So you want to keep it pretty, and we see a lot of the mass of the upper lip when we're zoomed, when we're looking down, when the, when the face is looking down at us and we're looking up at a face, we see the mass of the upper lip. We don't need a lot of asymmetry to make it read. We need just a little bit for her to look like she's pissed. Okay? So if we look at the before and after, before, after, Because he had that stretch happening, 
You had that thin lip that made her look just a little bit older. You had that line making her look older. And then you had the nose super, super small. I would make it even bigger. I'm not even worried because right now it's it's size right now is that last, like the final little bit of size that you can have. But I would make the nose even bigger because she is an adult. She's cute, but she's an adult. So it's okay to increase the size of the nose ever so slightly. It'll still look okay. All right. <clears throat> Don't forget that even though you might be in a warm environment or the light source might be warm, you still want to make the color of the eyeballs not no, not whatever they, they're on right now. This this like peachy bloodshot color. You want to give them their own... If, if the color of the eye is blue... I don't know what her stupid eye color is. But sorry, I really hate that champion. Um, you want to make the whites of the eye blue as well. If they're brown, you might want to make the whites of the eye gray. Don't make the whites of the eye pink or, or, or the skin tone. Because it'll look bloodshot. All right, use bloodshot only when you need to have bloodshot. So if her eyes are brown, let them be brown. But let the whites of the eyes stay white. Especially for these, you know, crossover, semi-realistic anime influence uh, splash arts. Splashes. You don't want to make the eye look like what's bloodshot. So the eyes are still brown without the, the rest of the eye looking like that. And so that mouth thing was looking just a little bit masculine, a little bit old. And you do have a line over here. There is a line. And you want to get rid of that line. You don't need it. Just cover it completely. Just It's that simple. It's that awesome and it's that simple. To get rid of the line, you simply cover it with an edge that is nice and clean. And it'll do the trick. All you need now is just some dark spots on either side of the lip and probably a little bit more white than the highlights. Okay, so that's done. Uh, for this one, I wanted to do one 14-day challenge uh, just so that we can stay kind of guiding the 14-day challengers because there's just so many of them now. Uh, you need a jawline. Jawline is really, really important. Okay, so what we want to do is just bring in that squareness. And when we bring it in, we're kind of going to see what you did everywhere else. So you oversize the jaw. I'm not sure if you're going for a female or not. I mean, you oversize the chin. And the lips look like they're, they've puckered. Because you have this gesture happening with them. And that gesture is there because there are no dark spots. And you have this super size, almost baby size, to the eyes. That needs to go down just a little bit. And then the, because um, you had the baby size in the eyes, but then you had these adult, you know, female, full-grown female eyebrow arc that is very, very thin and overplucked. Right, and then all that's missing is just the dark spots on either side of the lips. I'm just going to sketch it for you, because this is pretty much what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to plan it. I'm just going to sketch it real quick. And, um... I'm really not sure if you're pulling from a female or male. Because when we added that extra size in the jaw, everything kind of just fell apart. It started look like, looking like a really, really feminine man. So what we can do is go back to that 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 familiar um, golden ratio, that that uh, the triangle. We get rid of that grimness in the eyes. Give it a very, very neutral face. The eyes have this like really resentful upward look, like the way someone looks at you when they're really just angry after you scolded them, like the way a baby looks at you. And then um, just get rid of that excess grimness. 
And that's what your 14-day challenge should really act like. Very, very neutral face, using just a plain accessory list face to study some form as it happens on the face. Um, there are many other issues. The eyes are very unrealistic, the way you drew the eyes. Uh, the eyebrows are still, they have, need to have some structure to them and some thickness. And I recommend a forward-looking eye, so an eye that looks frontward instead of looks to the sides or upward. So I'm going to sketch that in as well. Just so that it looks... And then we're not seeing a lot of the f of upper eyelid because the eyes were looking upward. So what we want to do is just show that the eyes are partly closed, just neutral, not shocked, and not sleepy. And that's kind of what we want to do. So what you had before was just a little bit too on the extreme on all the fronts. So almost no, um, no jawline completely, just gone. And the neckline, for it to look feminine, the neckline has to start right after the jaw. Right after the edge of the jaw happens. And try to keep the ears nice and out of the way. And it really doesn't hurt to pick up a nice reference. I mean, the only way that this happens, so I said sliders. The only way that we really have this uh, super missing jaw is if there was an actual missing anatomy. So I don't think there was a way for us to, you know, like if we if we thin out the, the face just a little bit, it still looks like she has a jaw, she just has a thinner face. Let me raise the ambience just a touch. If we um, completely decrease the cheek fat, still has all her bone structure intact. So it doesn't matter how you want to dress up the face, you want to make it have a big chubby face. You know, the, the bone structure still has to be there when you take that 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 fat off. All right. So these are these are units. You don't just say, "Oh, that's the style I'm drawing." You can't say that because now you're drawing a human and a human has a jawline. A human has a jaw in order to be a human. <clears throat> okay? In this day and age, honestly, there's probably someone out there who associates with humans without jaws and identifies as a human without a jaw. Oh my god, we have too much time on our hands. <clears throat> but anyway, these are my corrections for you. That really, really, the anatomy is really off. The eye that the, 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 the was drawn very symbolically. Um, you don't have a good s separation between male and female, and for the 14 day challenge, separate the genders for the time being until told otherwise. I really want to look at the rest of these but I don't have time to look at the rest. Um, this is someone who did corrections for their after the critiques on Thursday I think. They're just amazing corrections. Honestly without all that's left really to do is just decrease the whites just a little bit and follow up with some really really basic uh, shades. So I'm just going to use a darkened layer and use just a really basic shade overall and you just want to add these in just so that you can give more attention to the to the positive space as it happens in the painting and then just have that in and then you have a nice ready portfolio ready image and that's why these challenges are so great they keep you guys you know always thinking about your portfolios you're always ready for you know, if someone asks you what's your work, this was a study, but it's also a portfolio piece. <clears throat> There's no time in your life where you can start doing portfolio pieces. You start as soon as possible, and studies look really good on a portfolio, as long as you keep them clean and presentable. And this is why I said the silhouettes really need breathing room, because when you add the shade in, that's when it really counts, that breathing room where there isn't just a blob of gray. And you zoom back out, it just looks delicious.
All right, so I recommend that. Just darken layer on a night, light value. Make sure you're not using the same value as the lines. And, uh, and just toss it into your portfolio. Really great. I love the correction you did here. A lot more realistic and believable. And this, this goes a long way for employers. This goes a very, very long way. You don't just draw for the sensationalism. Don't be a sensationalist when you draw with, your, with, with, with those Final Fantasy level sensationalist, um, impractical character designs. The more of a thinker you show yourself to be, the more um, the more uh, believable your work is, the more approachable it is. Right, try to stay on topic, guys. When you when you get off topic too soon or too much, um, you kind of just invite other people to discuss distant topics that that have make that have no relation to what we're talking about. So I'll look at the rest of these next time. But thank you everyone for joining today. If you guys like what you saw today, just go to Um I have everything uh, available there. So the current challenge has no resource pack. So I'm going to have to take this link down. There's no, This link needs to, leads to nowhere. Uh, but challenges with resource packs, there's they're always available here on the community page. Um, if you guys are interested in the program you saw today, Porta Studio, uh, it's available in the store on isrec.com and uh, what, what what I'm trying to do what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna upload a video basically letting you guys know that the price of Porter Studio is gonna spike because all the content that's coming up is going to um, justify a price spike so if <laughs> before you guys I'm pretty much thinking like by the end of this month um, that, that, that the Porter Studio will be more expensive and I know a lot of you can't afford uh, expensive stuff at this time because you're students or you, you don't have those kinds of resources available to you. So as a quick warning, because I love you guys, if you wanted it, it's best to get it now and not after this stuff comes out. You will still get the update. You will still get the extra, you know, whatever it is that you would have paid for if you, if you buy it too late. Um, so you, you updates are free for life. It's just a one-time buy, and I'm just letting you guys know that the team and I are almost completely done with it, and um, it'll come with a lot more content. And it is it is the student's best friend. It, it is designed to help me teach, but help you guys learn. It is a student's program. Uh, so if you guys are interested in that, it's better to just get it now and not wait till Christmas or something like that. Unless your parents have the resources, or unless you have that money by that time, then there's really nothing to worry about. Just as a warning, I don't want to be, you know, that person that didn't warn you about the price spike and I started telling you guys about it and all of a sudden it's like $30 more expensive. Um, so it will go up and I, and I do want to be transparent with all of you. The community is available here, so if you guys wanted to follow the community or join it, a lot of people have been joining it, go to Google+, Plus, go to Community tab, and all the links are here. So YouTube, if you want to watch, wanted to watch today's recording, or the rest of the recordings, just subscribe on YouTube. Google Plus is where you go to, to find the community and join it. And these are the, the next challenge is right here. And everyone's submissions and 14 day challenge submissions and theme submissions are all in this page. And then Facebook if you want your paint over sent back to you. Twitter if you want to follow me for class cancellations or uh, mini announcements. And then I have my Instagram, which is whatever. <laughs> it's just my Instagram. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope today's class was helpful. Bye-bye guys. See you on Thursday.